a, uh, uh, an employee at Texas Instruments, and he uh, chipped one of his teeth when he was eating his lunch and asked to be relieved to go to his dentist in Arlington. And on the way there, he got uh, to Stemmons uh, just about the time the motorcade was approaching uh, at the Dealey Plaza. And they were pulling cars off of the side, the police were, to make room for the motorcade to go to the market center where the president was to deliver a speech. And so they pulled Mr. Hoffman's car off, and he got out of the car and saw the president's motorcade approaching the triple underpass. And he not only saw that, he saw two men behind the big fence, one of whom was wearing uh, coveralls and carrying what appeared to be a tool bag. The other man was in a suit and a hat and was standing immediately behind the picket fence. And as Mr. Hoffman took this in, uh, he said the man behind the picket fence in the business suit lifted a rifle up that he had in the, with his butt on the ground, put it on top of the fence, and fired the bullet that hit the president in the head. And he saw that happen. He then caught it over to the man in the workman's clothes, tossed the rifle to him, and he broke the rifle down, put it into his tool bag, and walked off down the railroad track. And then shortly after that, a policeman got a crowd was rushing out toward the picket fence. And a policeman came around behind the picket fence and confronted this man who had fired the weapon. The man reached inside of his coat, pulled some identity papers out, showed them to the policeman. The policeman looked at him, nodded his head, and handed them back to the man, and they walked out around the fence together. So Mr. Hoffman uh, described that. He tried to describe it to the police, and he went over to a substation right after he had seen that. The trouble was Mr. Hoffman was a deaf mute, as was his wife, and so they just ignored him. Um, so Mr. Hoffman was frustrated by this, obviously, and that Thanksgiving, um, he was at his family Thanksgiving dinner, and he thought, well, now I can get my story out because uh, his uncle, who was on the Dallas police force, would be at the Thanksgiving dinner. So he told his uncle about this, he could communicate with him. And he said his uncle came over to him, lifted him up by the coat lapels, and said, Ed, you keep your mouth shut or you're going to be killed. So.
giving chase to a purse snatcher uh, who had snatched some lady's purse in his restaurant that he was chasing in a film a heart attack. That was about 20 years ago. But if you go into that uh, restaurant even to this day and look in the big room there back toward the entrance of the kitchen, the last time I was there about six months ago, there's a bulletin board with the dust jackets of four books on the involvement of the mafia in the assassination. As if they were proud of that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. I thought people would be asking about why there were only four surgical faculty. <laughs> and why the chair was out of town. <laughs> Other questions? <laughs> Yes. Thank you very much for your time and thank you again.